In the previous lesson, we explored how to display characters, graphics, and animations on the SSD 1306 OLED display. Today, we'll take things a step further by integrating a laser ranging sensor which allows for precise distance measurements. I'll teach you how to create a distance measuring device using the VL53L0X Time of Light Micro LiDAR Distance Sensor connected to an SSD 1306 OLED display. By the end of this lesson, you'll have a portable distance measuring device that's perfect for robotics, automation, or any project that requires accurate proximity detection. Hey everyone, welcome back to Education is Life, your go-to channel for unlocking the wonders of learning. It is me, Joe Edgo, and today we're diving into lesson 16 of the Arduino Uno R4 Ultimate Training Series. As always, thank you SunFounder for sponsoring this series and providing this amazing Arduino Uno R4 Minima Ultimate Sensor Kit. This is a fantastic toolkit for learning and building exciting IoT projects. You can find the links in the description below. And you can grab one to follow along with us. So, let's get started. For today's session, you'll need the VL53L0X Time of Light Micro LiDAR Distance Sensor, an SSD 1306 OLED display, a breadboard, some connecting wires, and of course, your Arduino Uno R4 Minima. Here's how to connect everything. Let's start by connecting the VL53L0X sensor. This sensor uses the I2C communication protocol, so it requires only four pins, VCC, ground, SEL, and SDA. So connect the VCC of the sensor to the 5 volt pin of the Arduino, or 3.3 volts depending on the controller you're using. Connect ground to ground, Connect the SDA to the SDA pin of the Arduino, that's pin A4, and the SEL pin to the SEL pin of the Arduino, that's pin A5. Next is the SSD1306 OLED display. Connect the VCC to the 5 volt pin on the Arduino, and the ground to ground. Now, since this OLED display also uses I2C communication protocol, it will share the SDA and SEL lines with the VL53L0X sensor. And that's one of the advantages of using an I2C communication protocol because it allows multiple devices to communicate on the same bus by assigning each device a unique address. This means that the master controller, your Arduino in this case, can selectively send data to a specific device by addressing it with that unique code effectively allowing communication with multiple devices, one at a time, through the same two wires, SDA and SEL. Essentially, only the address device responds to the data on the bus, while others ignore it. So once everything is connected, your circuit should look like this. The VL53L0X is a sophisticated time-of-flight distance measurement sensor developed by ST Microelectronics. It utilizes laser ranging technology to accurately measure distances up to 2 meters with a resolution of 1 millimeter. The sensor operates by emitting a narrow beam of infrared laser light at a wavelength of 940 nanometer vertical cavity surface emitting laser or VCSEL. And then measuring the time it takes for the light to reflect off an object and return to the sensor. This time is known as time of light. So, this time measurement is crucial for determining the distance. Now, the distance is calculated using the formula. Distance equals C times T divided by 2, where C is the speed of light and T is the time taken for the round trip. In Arduino, this process is simplified by using libraries like the Adafruit VL53L0X library. The library handles the communication with the sensor over I2C and provides functions to initiate measurements and retrieve distance data. For example, the ranging test function in the Adafruit library initiates a measurement and returns the distance in millimeters. The sensor is also compatible with both 3.3 volts and 5 volt systems, making it versatile for use with various microcontrollers like ESP32 and Raspberry Pi. The VL53L0X sensor is widely used in various applications due to its accuracy and reliability. It is commonly used in robotics for obstacle detection and navigation, 
smart home devices for automatic faucet and soap dispensers that utilize hand detection, industrial automation for use of object detection in production lines, and consumer electronics like enhancing autofocus systems in cameras. Now, let's write a program to test the VL53L0X sensor in measuring distances. To get started, open the Library Manager and search for the Adafruit VL53L0X library and install it along with its dependencies. Now, in our code, we need to include the wire library for I2C communication and the Adafruit VL53L0X library for interfacing with the sensor. Next is to create an instance of the VL53L0X sensor. In the setup function, we initialize the serial communication, have a short delay, and the VL53L0X sensor using the begin method. Now, it is better to check if the sensor initialization fails so that the program stops with an error message. And then, putting a while true statement here makes an infinite loop and prevents the succeeding codes from executing. However, if the sensor initialization succeeds, then we print a message VL53L0X ready. In the loop function, we start by creating a variable of type VL53L0X ranging measurement data underscore T. We call measure. This variable will be used later to hold all the measurement information. Now, to get the distance reading, we call the ranging test function and pass the reference to the measure variable. Then, we need to check if the reading is valid so we can print the distance in millimeters. We do that by checking if the range status is not equal to 4 because a range status of 4 means that the phase check has failed. You can check the official VL53L0X API documentation for complete range status, link in the description below. So here, we print distance in millimeter, and then print the actual sensor reading using the range millimeter field. However, if the phase check has failed, meaning no object in range, we print a message object out of range. And finally, let's have a short delay here before looping back to read the distance again. So, let's upload this program. And then open the serial monitor to see live distance readings. And it's working. Now, to make it portable, Let's display the measure distance on the OLED screen. First, make sure you've installed the SSD1306 library by Adafruit and all its dependencies from Lesson 15. This should install the required Adafruit GFX library as well, which is the core graphics library for our OLED display, so you can draw shapes and animate them. Now, in our sketch, let's include the Adafruit GFX and the Adafruit SSD1306 libraries, then define for macros the screen width of 128 pixels, the screen height of 64 pixels, the screen I2C address which is 0x3C, and the OLED reset pin which is negative 1 for sharing with the Arduino reset pin. Then we create an instance of the Adafruit SSD1306 we call OLED and pass four arguments, the screen width, screen height, a reference to the wire object from the wire library, and the OLED reset pin. Now in the setup function, we initialize the OLED using the begin method by passing two arguments, a constant that defines the display voltage from 3.3 volts, and the I2C address. Also, let's display the default logo of Adafruit from this library and set the text color to white. For this monocolor OLED display, white means pixels will be on and black means pixels will be off. Now, instead of printing this failed to boot error message to the serial monitor, we'll print it to the OLED display. First, let's clear the previous display. Set the text size to 2 and position the cursor to the upper left corner of the screen. And then change the serial print line to OLED.print. 
Now, make sure to call the display function to actually print the message on the screen. Similarly, to print the distance to the OLED display, first, we clear any previous displays, then change the text size to 3. Set the cursor position somewhere in the middle before printing the actual distance in millimeters. Finally, we call the display function. Alternatively, if the object is out of range, we clear the display. Set the text size to 1, adjust the cursor position to center the message object out of range, and again, call the display function to render it on the screen. Now, let's upload the code and see how it works. So, the display is working and it says, object out of range. That's because there is no object in range and the sensor is directly pointing to my ceiling, which is about 2 meters high. So, let's try putting a fixed object directly on top of the sensor. And it looks good. However, it fluctuates a bit, probably around 5 to 6 millimeters. Now, I encourage you to experiment with the code by reading its API documentation and datasheet if you want to dig deeper. For example, in the datasheet, you can see the graph for the default ranging mode, which is up to 1.2 meters. However, the long range mode can be configured up to 2 meters, but the accuracy is partially decreased. You can also see the ranging accuracy table as well as the range profile. And here, it says that the default mode for the range timing budget is 30 milliseconds. The minimum is 20 milliseconds for a high-speed measurement, up to 33 milliseconds for long range. However, should we want a more precise measurement, we can increase this value to 200 milliseconds. Now, in the VL53L0X API user manual, we can see all the useful functions here like this set measurement timing budget microseconds which allows us to set the overall timing budget in microseconds and the function allocates the timings internally. It says that increasing the timing budget increases the range measurement accuracy as well. So let's try this function and set the timing budget to 200 milliseconds. Upload it again. And we can observe fewer fluctuations now. I'd say around 1 to 2 millimeters. Well, this is quite accurate. And we've successfully created a distance measurement device using the VL53L0X sensor and SSD1306 OLED display. For your challenge activity, try to modify the program to display the distance readings in both millimeters and inches on the OLED. Also, add an animation of your choice when the object is out of range, instead of displaying the text object out of range. If you forgot how to create an animation, please refer back to lesson 15 where we covered it in detail. Share your progress in the comments below and don't hesitate to ask questions if you need help. As always, thank you for watching, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. The more viewers we have, the more in-depth content I can create for you in the future. So, keep learning, keep experimenting, and always remember, education is life. See you in our next lesson. Happy coding!